श्री साई सच्चरित्र चैप्टर फोर्टी नाइन स्टोरीज ऑफ हरि कानोबा सोमदेव स्वामी नाना साहेब सांदोलकर प्रिलिमिनरी When even the Vedas and the Puranas cannot sufficiently praise or describe Brahma or Sadguru then how can we ignorant described our Sadguru Shri Sai Baba we think that it is better for us to keep quiet in this matter in reality the observance of the vow of silence is the best way of praising the Sadguru but the divine qualities of Sai Baba make us forget our own vow of silence and inspire us to open our mouth tasteful dishes lose their taste if there is no company of friends and relatives to partake the dishes with us but when they join us the dishes acquire additional flavor the same is the case with the sai leela amrit the nectar in the form of sai's leelas this nectar we cannot partake alone friends and brothers have to join us the more the better it is sai baba himself who inspires these stories and gets them written as he desires our duty is to surrender completely to him and meditate on him practicing penance is better than pilgrimage vow sacrifice and charity worshiping hari that's lord is better than penance and meditation on the sadguru is the best of all we have therefore to chant sai's name think over his sayings in our mind meditate on his form feel true love for him in our heart and do all our actions for his sake there is no better means than this for snapping the bondages of this sansar if we can do our duty on our part as stated above sai is bound to help and liberate us now we revert to the stories of this chapter hari kanova a gentleman of mumbai named hari kanova heard from his friends and relatives many leelas of baba he did not believe in them as he had a doubting mind he wanted to see baba himself so he came to shirdi with some mumbai friends he wore a lace bordered turban on his head and a new pair of sandals on his feet on seeing baba from a distance he thought of going to him and prostrating himself before baba he did not know what to do about his new sandals after going to a one corner in the open courtyard he placed his sandals there and went in the masjid and had baba's darshan He made a reverential bow to Baba, took udi and prasad from Baba, and returned. When he reached the corner, he found to his utter dismay that his sandals had disappeared. He searched for them in vain, and returned to his lodging very much dejected. He bathed, offered worship and nividya, and sat down for meals. But all this while, he was thinking about nothing but his sandals. After finishing his meals he came out to wash his hands when he saw a maratha boy coming towards him he held in his hand a stick at the end of which was hanging a pair of new sandals he said to the men who had come out to wash their hands that baba had sent him with this stick in hand and asked him to go on the streets crying hari ka beta jari ka pheta and that if anybody claims these sandals first assure yourself that his name is hari and that he is the son of ka that is kanoba and that he wears a lace bordered turban and then give them over to him on hearing this hari kanoba was pleasantly surprised he went ahead to the boy and claimed the sandals as his own he said to the boy that his name was hari and that he was the son of ka that is kanoba and showed him his lace bordered turban the boy was satisfied and returned the sandals to him hari kanoba wondered in his mind that his lace bordered turban was visible to all and baba might have seen it but how could baba know that his name was hari 
and that he was the son of Kanopa as this was his first trip to Shirdi he came there with the sole object of testing baba and with no other motive he came to know by this incident that baba was a great satpurush he got what he wanted and returned home well pleased somdev swami now hear the story of another man who came to try baba bhai ji brother of kaka saheb dikshit was staying at nagpur when he had gone to the himalayas in 1906 he made an acquaintance with one somdev swami of hardwar at uttar kashi down the gangotri valley both took down each other's names in their diaries 5 years later somdev swami came to nagpur and was bhai ji's guest there he was pleased to hear the leelas of baba and a strong desire arose in his mind to go to shirdi and see baba he got a letter of introduction from bhai ji and left for shirdi after passing manmad and kopargaon he took a tanga and drove to shirdi as he came near shirdi he saw two flags floating high above the masjid in shirdi generally we find different behavior different mode of living and different outward paraphernalia with different states but these outward signs should never be our standards to judge the worth of a saint but with somdev swami it was different as soon as he saw the flags flying he thought why should a saint take a liking for the flags does this denote sainthood it implies that saints hankering after fame thinking thus he wished to cancel his shirdi trip and said to his fellow travelers that he would go back they said to him then why did you come so far if your mind became restless by the mere sight of the flags how much more agitated would you be on seeing the rath the palanquin the horse and all other paraphernalia in shirdi the swami got more confounded and said no sadhu with horses palanquins and tom toms have i seen and it is better for me to return than visit such a sadhu after saying this he started to return the fellow travelers pressed him not to do so but to proceed they asked him to stop his inconsistent way of thinking and told him that the sadhu that is sai baba did not care a bit for the flags and other paraphernalia nor for the name it was the people his devotees who kept on all this paraphernalia out of love and devotion to him finally he was persuaded to continue his journey to go to shirdi and see sai baba when he went and saw sai baba from the courtyard he melted inside his eyes were full of tears his throat was choked and all his evil and crooked thoughts vanished he remembered his guru saying that is our abode and place of rest where the mind is most pleased and settled he wished to roll himself in the dust of baba's feet and when he approached baba baba got wild and cried aloud let all our humbug that's paraphernalia be with us you go back to your home beware if you come back to this masjid again why take the darshan of one who flies a flag over his masjid is this a sign of sainthood remain here not a moment the swami was taken aback by surprise he realized that baba read his heart and spoke it out how omniscient was sai baba he knew that he was least intelligent and that baba was noble and pure he saw baba embracing somebody touching someone with his hand comforting others staring kindly at some laughing at others giving udi prasad to some and thus pleasing and satisfying all why should he alone be dealt so harshly after thinking seriously he came to realize that baba's conduct responded exactly to his inner thought and that he should take a lesson from this and improve and that baba's wrath was a blessing in disguise it is needless to say that later on his faith in sai baba was confirmed and he became a staunch devotee of baba दादा साहेब चांदोलकर हेमाडपन कन्क्लूड्स दिस चैप्टर विथ अ स्टोरी ऑफ नाना साहेब चांदोलकर 
Nana Sahib was once sitting in the masjid with Bhaisapati and others. A Muslim gentleman from Bijapur came with his family to see Baba. On seeing wheeled ladies with him, Nana Sahib wanted to go away. But Baba prevented him from doing so. The ladies came and took the darshan of Baba. When one of the ladies removed her wheel for saluting Baba's feet, Nana Sahib, who had a glimpse of her face, was so much smitten with her beauty that he wished to see her face again. Knowing Nana's restlessness of mind, Baba spoke to him after the lady had left the place. Nana, why are you getting agitated in vain? Let the senses do their allotted work or duty. We should not meddle with their work. God has created this beautiful world and it is our duty to appreciate its beauty. The mind will get steady and calm slowly and gradually. When the front door was opened, why go by the back one? When the heart is pure, there is no difficulty whatsoever. Why should one be afraid of anyone if there be no evil thought in us? The eyes may do their work. Why should you feel shy and tottering? Shama was there and he could not follow the meaning of what Baba said. So he asked Nana about this on their way home. Nana told him about his restlessness at the sight of the beautiful lady. How Baba knew it and advised him about it. Nana explained Baba's meaning as follows. That our mind is fickle by nature. It should not be allowed to get wild. The senses may get restless. The body, however, should be held in check and not allowed to be impatient. Senses run after objects of desire, but we should not follow them and crave for them. By slow and gradual practice, restlessness can be conquered. We should not be swayed by the senses, though they cannot be completely controlled. We should curb them, rightly and properly, according to the need of the occasion. Beauty is the subject of sight. We may fearlessly look at the beauty of objects. There is no room for shyness or fear. Only we should never entertain evil thoughts, making the mind desireless. Observe God's work of beauty. In this way, the senses will be easily and naturally controlled and even in enjoying objects, you will be reminded of God. If the outer senses are not held in check and if the mind be allowed to run after objects and be attached to them, our cycle of births and deaths will not come to an end. With Vivek, that's discrimination as a charioteer, we will control the mind and shall not allow the senses to go astray. With such a charioteer, we reach the Vishnupada, that is, the final abode, our real home, from where there is no return. Bow to Shisai, peace to all, Om Sairam.